Hello and welcome to the world of NDE 4.0. My name is Johannes Rana and today is a great day because today we will be discussing a topic which I promised to you already quite a while ago. Today we will be discussing the future of phased array ultrasonic testing. We will be discussing the total focusing method. We will be discussing full matrix capture. So abbreviated, that's FMC TFM. And if you haven't done so, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Also, click on that bell to get notified once I upload a new video. Please give this video a thumbs up and please watch it all the way to the end because this is how YouTube works and how we can make this channel an NDE total more visible to the world. Now, a couple of weeks ago, or actually it is about one and a half years ago, I did a video which is called Working Principle of Phased Array Ultrasonic Testing. And I will leave a link to that video right here Within that video, we discussed that actually a phased array transducer is a multi-purpose transducer. For example, I can use it to create an angled wave penetrating my component. I can also use that probe to actually create some focusing within my component. I can also, just by changing a little bit the programming of my component, actually shift the active elements and therefore move my ultrasonic beam without moving my probe. And I do that all just by electronically reprogramming it, by yeah, programming some so-called delay laws or focal laws. And with that I can not only do one angle, no, I can I can then say, okay, I want to do the angles from minus 20 to plus 20 degrees in a five degree interval. So what my instrument is doing, it's calculating all the focal laws and it's starting with a minus 20 degree, then it does a minus 15, minus 10 and so on until it reaches the 20 degrees. And then it puts all of that into a nice sector scan into one image. Even that before it was nine individual A scans, it puts them in one nice image. Similar with the linear scan. Yeah, it starts with the first four elements, then it starts shifting, and then I get a linear scan, like I moved my probe. So, phased array ultrasonics is something really powerful, but it also has some drawbacks. And later on in this video, we will discuss yeah, how we can eliminate those drawbacks. Now, in the beginning, I will show you a little bit the challenges, the drawbacks we are seeing with sector scans and linear scans. Now, if you already know all of that, then, yeah, I have used chapters here in this video, and you can directly jump to the explanation what is FMC or TFM, or you could directly jump towards my comparison of phased array ultrasonics with FMC TFM. So now, let's get started. Phased array ultrasonics, if we look on how a sector scan works, we have our component, within that component we have an indication. We do not know where that indication is, therefore, yeah, we're putting our, our probe on that component, we're using a sector scan with a couple of different angles, and already with the zero degree, our indication is within our sound beam. Our sound hits that indication and we get a reflection back. Now, what do we know? We know the sound path from the probe to the reflection. We also know that we used a zero degree beam and we know the position of our probe. But what we do not know is the exact angle under which we actually hit that indication. So, the only thing, this th so we put the things we know into our sector scan image. And that's why we plot a point right here. We do another angle. Again, we are hitting it. And again, we are plotting a point. 
And we do that over and over again, and that's why we get into this circular shape of an, uh, of an indication. And we can see if we look onto actual results of scans, and here on this shear wave phase array scan, we can immediately see those circular uh, artifacts. Similar here for this longitudinal wave inspection, we also see the circular artifacts here in this image. And just wanted to point out, remember this image, because we will be getting back to that exact component over and over again during this presentation, because I will use it for the comparison. Linear scan, similar situation, we have our probe. And let's say this time we, folk, we fire with the middle four elements, we get a reflection and we mark a point. We move our probe, again, we are hitting it. The sound path is a little bit longer. We are at a different position with our center beam. Therefore, we are putting, we are putting a mark right here, which at the end, we do a lot of shots, we are getting those crescent-shaped indications. And that's also what we can see here on this exact same, or on this image of the exact same component we saw before with our sector scan. So if we look on both of them, they give us nice results. But actually, they are not as nice as I want to have them. I don't want to have those crescent shape artifacts or those yeah, circular artifacts. I want to have a point, a point exactly where my indication is at. How can we get there? Yes, answer, we can do the so-called FMC TFM. An FMC TFM, that's a two way process. FMC is how we capture the data and TFM is the post-processing. Let's first have a look on how we capture that data so that later on we can then use it for TFM, which is the post-processing. So how does FMC work? We fire with our first transducer or with our first element and just with the first element. No delay laws, nothing, just firing the first element. Our sound propagates within our component at some point, we reach a reflector. The sound is reflected. And that reflected sound, at some point, it hits back some of our transducers. Some a little bit earlier, some a little bit later. And what we do during FMC is we capture all of the time signals of every element. We are recording an individual high-frequency A scan. So for this situation now, where we are just firing the first uh, element, we are capturing actually eight different high frequency A scans. And the same is true actually for element number two. We're firing now as a second step for element number two. Again, we are getting a reflection. That reflection reaches our uh, our individual elements, one after the other. And again, we are, we are recording eight individual high-frequency A scans. Now we are firing the third element, again, recording all eight high-frequency A scans, element number four, five, six, seven, and eight. And each time we are recording all eight high-frequency A scans. So in total, we are getting towards 64 high frequency A scans for an L8 element probe. If we would go to a, let's say, a 32 element phased array transducer, it would take us 32 shots and we would have to record 1024 individual high frequency A scans. Good part is we don't need any special transducers we can use a standard phased array probe. We are also using for phased array ultrasonics. One element is fired after the other, and for each of those elements, yeah, we record the returning signal of each element individually. And with that data set, 
we are now going into the so-called total focusing method. Now, total focusing method, we already have talked about a method which is pretty similar. The so-called synthetic aperture focusing technique, SAFT. Now, what we do with SAFT, with SAFT, we have here that component you see here. This is actually a huge component. This has about two meters in diameter. And what we do, we use an automated inspection system. We use classic UT on that one, not face array. And then we move the probe one time around it. We index and we, again, we move one time around it. We record all of the data. And what you see here on this uh, left image is actually the result of our classic UT. And what you can see are those crescent-shaped indications. Again, here, we do not want to have them. So what we did is we actually also used a reconstruction calculation. So we took all of those different signals of all of those positions. And again, here we're talking about high frequency A scans. And we are putting them, actually what we do, we put a grid on top of our component, a quite fine grid. And for each individual volumetric element, which is also called a voxel, we calculate this formula. Now, for some of you, this might be a lot of math, but just give me a minute because it's just two slides with some formulas and I will wake you once I'm done with the formulas. Okay, so, but what you can see is how much we improve the signals we are getting here, left to the right, and also how much we improve the noise. Now, for FMC, we're doing something very, very similar. Again, we're using a grid. A grid with pixels we are overlaying our component. And for every individual pixel, we are actually yeah, calculating all the different signals we have. In this case, we have 64 signals, so eight times eight signals. And all the signals which could have emanated from that one pixel, we add up. Yeah. Now we are getting towards the result. So this is how a phased array ultrasonic testing linear scan looks like on this component. And this is how a TFM results look of this, looks of that same component. This is how a sector scan looked on this component. And this is how TFM looks on this component. So you can immediately see the improvement we are getting, both from a sector scan to TFM or from a linear scan towards TFM. You can also see, not as clearly as on the SAFT image, but also the signal to noise ratio has been improved. Now, I know that a lot of you are using phased array ultrasonic testing for a lot of years. And I know that you found ways to make your results on that component better by, for example, using different focusing settings, perhaps even focusing settings for different depth zones. But that's is really application-centered. Whereas TFM is something, yeah, I can kind of take the TFM probe, put it into that component, and I get that result without a lot of just, just justifying it or changing it. For sure, I have to put in the, the the sound velocities and stuff like that, but it quite works out of the box. This is why I think this is the future of phased array ultrasonic testing, because we get out of the box such great results. Now, thanks a lot, I have to say to Cyril from AOS, for all those pictures you have, or for most of the pictures you have th seen throughout this presentation. And yes, thank you for watching. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, please leave them down here in the comment section. Next time, let's see what we will be doing. I'm thinking about perhaps AI, could be a good topic. 
As usual, you will find more information in the description of this video. I hope you like this video. I hope you subscribe to this channel. I hope you click on that bell. I hope you give that video a thumbs up. I hope I will see you soon. So thank you for watching. See you soon. Thank you and bye.